Hi, I'm Mike Glenn. I'm the senior pastor of Brentwood Baptist Church. And this is our YouTube channel. We'd love for you to be part of it by hitting subscribe or uh, letting us know you like it by hitting like. And uh, we'll look forward to you being part of us every time we're on this little part of our adventure together. Uh, if you're part of Brentwood Baptist Church or been paying attention to what we do, you will know that racial reconciliation is a huge issue for us. Uh, it is something that we're taking very seriously. Now, that is a challenge here because um, in the 37027 zip code where Brentwood uh, Baptist Church is uh, in Williamson County, there's not a very large African-American population, but there is in Davidson County. Uh, this race relation thing has been going on for several hundred years. Uh, I grew up in Alabama in the 60s and 70s, so I was right in the middle of it. I know what racism looks like. I know what it feels like. I was part of it. It was the air you breathed in Alabama. Now, I was saved from a lot of that because I played sports. And uh, once you get in the huddle and you're all wearing the same jersey, it really doesn't matter what color your skin is. If, uh, if you can get the ball in the hoop or if you can get the ball across the goal line, I'm going to find a way to get you the ball if you're wearing the same jersey I am. But here's what I have uh, figured out. Here's what I've, I've watched. Uh, there have been several race events uh, over the last several years. Um, and the times when the Christians have responded has been very, very different than the times the politicians responded. The times like Charleston, when uh, uh, the Mother Church of Charleston uh, responded with, with grace and mercy and let out that this is how we love each other, Charleston experienced a true revival and, and, and taught the nation something about how to love each other. So here's one of the things that we're trying to do. We understand that the government can't fix this. This is something that the church is going to have to lead out on. And it, it leads out on it because of, of the very basic theology that we have about people. One, we believe that everybody is a bearer of the imago dei. Everybody bears the image of God. That is, somebody has something of God that he left in them when he created them that nobody else has. It is something unique that they bring to the body from their experience with God, from their relationship with God. And our church is weak. Our church is uh, lacking if that person doesn't bring their experience to us. Second, we understand that everybody, regardless of race, ethnic background, nationality, tribe, is somebody that Jesus loved enough to die for. It's somebody that Jesus loved enough to call them home and to be part of their family, part of his family right now. And if he's part of Jesus's family, he's part of our family. That's something that doesn't happen anywhere else. And so when uh, white believers get together and worship with African-American believers, uh, when a black church partners with a, with a white church, an Asian church, to, to uh, do some ministry project, there's a testimony to the glory of God, to the diversity of God, to the wonder of God that one tribe can't do by themselves. It all has to be together so that we can celebrate the glory and the greatness, the vastness of our God. So it happens when you take little steps. Now, you know, all the marches and all of that are fine. But real life change happens in small, small steps. So uh, if you are in a corporate situation, reach out to somebody who's different from you. Uh, if you have a black co-worker, go to lunch with them. Ask about their story. How did they grow up? How did they get to where they were? Um, if you have an Asian co-worker, if you're, if you're a, a black or Asian, there's a white co-worker, go find out about their story. Understand who they are so that you can begin the friendship by respecting their journey. A lot of times, uh, if we understood somebody's journey, we would have a whole new level of respect for them if we understood every obstacle they had to overcome and how hard they would had to fight to get where they are. This happens when you take the step. Why are you able to take that step? Why? Because everything I need comes from Christ. My identity, my value as a person, all of that is given to me by the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. I'm free to love you. I'm free to be your friend without expecting anything back or needing anything back. And so it'll change when one person becomes a friend of another person, when two guys start hanging out as friends and become brothers. 
this has happened in my own life. Uh, there's a local pastor here, Bishop uh, Joseph Walker. And, and Bishop Walker, if you're familiar with him, is a social media ninja. I mean, he wears it out. And so I called him. I said, will you teach me some of the stuff you're doing in social media? And so we met. He coached me up on some social media things, and we became friends. Then we became brothers. And now our churches are working together, all because he and I sat down and started talking about social media, and I learned from him. There's a vast, big world out there full of the wonder and the beauty of God who is as diverse as anything we ever dreamed of. And you get to know some of that diversity that is part of God himself, some of the creativity that is part of God himself, by talking to somebody who's a little different than you are. That's how ra racial reconciliation will happen, when believers begin to take it seriously by loving the brothers who look differently than they do, by loving the sisters who look differently than they do, and we'll teach the world how it's done. Uh, I'm Mike Glenn. This is our YouTube channel, and I'm glad you're part of it. Hit subscribe or like, and we'll see you next time.